initiative in this direction. In Berlin, after several attempts, and this I want to show as the only example here, in Berlin we have a special uh, urban development concept concerning uh, the climate change. And it is very much related to anticipating the changes and to safeguard the quality of life of the people of the city. And I think this should be one of the major objectives of such initiatives. In Dresden, we do something similar with uh, this project which I have already mentioned. We're trying to establish a science policy interface to be able to join in hands for a better future of the city and for much more competitiveness as well from an economic point of view because the business community has joined this initiative and I think this is a cornerstone of success. And of course, if I look at Bogota, I am happy to see the prick which is there which has been a tremendous initiative and a very good ground for further work in, uh, on the urban level. Ladies and gentlemen, let me uh, jump to my second topic. What is the role of urban planning and development in the discussion of uh, climate, about climate change? How can we link climate change debate with the instruments and the possibilities, the options which we have in urban planning and development? First of all, we should ask ourselves, why do we have to establish such links? Is that really true? And I have heard that there are some comments as well, always, everywhere in the world they happen. Climate change is something and urban planning and land policy is something different. No, ladies and gentlemen, it is not. It is, it is the same topic if we look into the future. Therefore, there is a very strong link between the two. And if we look at mitigation, concepts like the compact city, the city, like we call it, the city of short distances with a mixture of land uses is a step towards a better future under climate change conditions. It is related to mobility, to transport, to public transport, as well to the building, the construction, the kind of how we construct our built environment today and how it will be behave in a way, how it will react and what kind of shelter it will give us in 50 years to come. If we look at adaptation, we talk about densities. We talk, talk about the, uh, the, the green areas. We have heard a lot about that, and some years, uh, one and a half years ago, I was in uh, Lima uh, with the Goethe uh, Institute, and I gave some, uh, we had some discussions about uh, this topic, and I congratulate the city of Lima to be so strong in this direction, so very good. And I would uh, like to see more green, more green in an organized way to come up in Bogota as well. So uh, the, uh, another topic is the management of, of areas which are under environmental risks, like flooding uh, and so on. It's the question of protecting uh, natural areas. It's the, um, the question of the permeability of the soils, that the water can drown, that it can go down to the underground, and we do not put it directly to our rivers and even uh, put more problems to uh, the situation of flooding in maybe housing areas. It's infrastructure infrastructure which is very important and again here concerning the adaptation the kind of how we construct our buildings is in, in increasingly important 
So you see, there is a strong connection between climate change, on the one hand, and urban planning and development on the other. And of course, there are a lot of uh, uh, impacts uh, which uh, have been uh, rather well put together by the United Nations Habitat in the different publications. I don't want to go into details here. Uh, its temperature is related uh, to precipitation, of course, to sea level rise. And if we talk about sea level rise concerning Bogota, of course, this is not a topic, not a direct topic, but what will happen to the people who have to migrate because they lose their home? Where do they go? Do they stay in the same region? Or do they come to Bogota to look for a better, a better future? And I think this is a very important point as well, to take care of the migration aspect due to those who have lost their homes and their, 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 their area, their, their homeland. And of course, uh, there are different uh, impacts uh, concerning extreme rainfall, tropical cyclones, drought, heat or cold waves, abrupt climate change, and so on and so on. I as well don't want to go into the different uh, aspects here, population movements, I've main mentioned biological changes and so on. All important if we talk about urban areas and uh, the way urban development can react on. And there's a question of where we should that do that under a standalone policy. So it means we make our climate change programs and that's it. Or whether we try to integrate climate change into the different programs which we have on different levels. Both have uh, good arguments, both sides. And maybe even both strategies have to be followed. To have a concept concerning how to deal in an integrated way with climate change, on one hand, and then how to deal it with it in the implementation, taking the implementation aspect in my, in, under consideration, uh, when, and then this means to include it in the different sectorial plans. So, most probably, we don't need both. And I don't want to go into the different arguments, but I think this is a debate which has to be led everywhere where we talk about climate change. Of course, if we look into the planning instruments in a little bit more detailed way, we can see that, uh, of course, the countries are different, the uh, local powers are different, and uh, the, phil the planning, planning philosophies are very different worldwide. So therefore, there's not a unique, a worldwide, a global model of how to integrate climate change into urban planning. There are governments uh, where, or, or countries where the, the central government is very strong, or others where we have a rather strong figure at the local level. Our council in Germany, usually just in a, in a medium-sized town like Dresden with 500 inhabitants, 500,000 inhabitants, has about 75 councillors. So you can imagine how difficult it is to take decisions there. Whereas we have a much smaller council here, and uh, I congratulate you to these possibilities how to take decisions here. Of course, we have more regulatory planning instruments, and we have as those planning philosophies which uh, are mainly based on discussion, on discourse, on consensus building. There are more strategically oriented ones, or there are more uh, land use uh, policy oriented ones. There are more um, sectoral ones, there are more integrated ones. And uh, then as well, there's one point which is very important for the private sector, developers as well, it's the private property rights versus the social obligation of property. And I think this is a very important point. We are happy in Germany and in many European countries to have this kind of establishment that the owner of the land, he's bound to the society, to the general 